Roy Aja, and on this episode of Kendra Presents Black History Series, we are here at Friends Central School for the Middle School Book Fair to celebrate none other than Marley Dias. You may know Marley Dias from her groundbreaking internet campaign, 1,000 Black Girl Books. She never saw herself represented in the book she was reading. Her mother asked her, what are you gonna do about it? And there you have it. Black history in action. We're gonna go inside and take a look. Super proud of you! Oh my God! Thank you. I'm fanning out a little bit because you know it's weird. It's like I've known you a long time, but like I'm fanning out. I'm excited Thank for you. you. It's all this kind of mixture of yeah, weird jumble of emotions. Mom, yeah, fun friend thing that yeah. I'm doing with you. How excited are you about your first book? I am very, very excited, <laughs> and I actually talk a lot about you all and Kendra the family so in it because you guys were one of the first people to invest in the campaign and support the campaign, even when we had like 200 books <laughs> and we had two weeks left. And you guys were like, good. remember, just remember to donate everybody, please. <laughs> we had a ball with it, and then from the very beginning, I remember your mom texted me, she's telling me like, look, Marley has this great idea, mm -hmm. uh, she, she was really expressing herself, and I asked her what was she gonna do about it, and then she came with this, you know, amazing mm -hmm. campaign, but it's been a build from the beginning yeah. to the end. And so tell every, tell me just what was the biggest lesson you learned throughout this whole process, taking something mm -hmm. from literally just an idea to what has become a campaign that's changed lives? I think the biggest thing I've learned is to live in my truth. And I think you've known that I've learned that since I was a baby, but I have to learn it more and more through the campaign. Mm -hmm. That being honest with myself and being honest with other kids, it mm -hmm. opens up a space for other people to be open to share their ideas. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm very nervous about something, I have to be honest about that because there are gonna be kids in the audience or adults in the audience or even and you know parents in the audience mm -hmm. who are gonna now feel like it's okay to either share with their kids or to be open for their kids sharing their either really scary feelings or when they're really happy or when they want to change their mind. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to be honest so that I can create a space where everybody feels comfortable to share their ideas mm -hmm. in the way that my mom had created for me. Oh, that's amazing. My children consistently tell me uh, that sometimes young people, mm -hmm. their ideas are not treated with the same validity no, as adults. Not. And that's been a big challenge for my children. Mm -hmm. And clearly, I'm sure it was a challenge for you at some yeah. point. How did you meet that challenge? Who you don't have to tell me who it was, honey. We would talk about that tea later. <laughs> but it, at some point, you you were, did you ever feel like they're not taking me seriously because I'm a child? Yes, and one of the first interviews I did on a really big TV show, I felt like nobody was really had, nobody cared what I said. I could have said whatever I wanted to, and they were just amazed by the words that were coming out of my mouth and not mm -hmm. the actual kind of content and the quality of mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. They just cared that I was able to even talk. Yeah. And that bothered me, and I feel like for a multitude of reasons, it was because of my age that I felt like it could it could have been because of my gender and it could have been because of my race. Mm. Um, and I didn't and it could know. Have been all three. Yeah, and it, it was probably all three <laughs> happening at the same time, which is which made me really frustrated. Mm -hmm. And um, in a sense, the book and through collecting these books, I try to educate people that the things that black girls say and the things that black girls do, uh, especially young black girls, is still important and it's as important as anybody else. And I see that now because I'm, you know, famous or whatever, mm -hmm. I I am able to I meet a lot of people who feel that way and feel mm -hmm. like they're I'm not being respected and they don't want to share their ideas because they don't feel like any anybody's gonna believe in them, or they don't feel like they can say it without getting yelled at. Um, and that happens a lot with teachers, and we try to educate that through the book, and also with parents and the, and the caregiver circle. Oh, that's amazing. So what does Marley Dias' self-care look like? How do you take care of yourself, honey? How do you make yourself laugh and have a good time? Uh, it's definitely my mom and, and courtesy of my phone and my friends and being able to share with them when my book was like the number one bestseller and also sleep. And my mom is very, very strict about sleep. Luckily, we had an uh, earlier end time like on the tour yesterday, so I got to like sleep even more, which is very, very fun for me. So um, 
yeah, we ha we do love a nap here. <laughs> and um, we try to work on that, especially even when I go back to school and I know I'm gonna have a lot of makeup work and things I have to do with my teachers, making sure that all the calls or all the practicing happens uh, before um, at before 4.30. So I'm mm -hmm. able to have that time to either do things, uh, play like The Sims or go on my phone mm -hmm. or like do whatever, and then also to do my homework and to focus on being a student. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that my mom, in a sense, is a huge part of that. And sometimes she doesn't even take care of herself because she's working so hard on me. It's a mom and thing. it is definitely a mom thing <laughs> and a, definitely a black mom thing right there. Especially you who have a lot of kids. Yeah, so, you know, I do. so it's, a, it's something that I have to also tell her, like, I got this sometimes and I'm, okay. I'm growing up but still she has to teach me a lot of things so we're not there yet where I can do all the uh, focus on all the stuff by myself and I, I hope that she can stay with me even when I'm older so she can help me with all this stuff well the wonderful thing is about moms is that they never get tired of loving their children mm -hmm. and we are all so proud of you you know you have about a thousand moms maybe yeah. more and we're so happy to have you here. We're here at Friend Central School, and they're waiting patiently for you to come out there and yeah. talk about your book. Mm -hmm. Thank you for spending some time with me. Thank and you. It's a pleasure. I love you so much. Give me a hug. I love you, too. <laughs>